Hi. I wanted to, to spend a few minutes talking about understanding wealth creation and giving you a few basic tips that have worked for me. I'm now 64 and I have created considerable wealth, but when I was much younger and starting out, even though I had a great job, I had been to the best colleges, uh, you know, I had a fair amount of anxiety around wealth creation and that anxiety was uh, very unfounded. So if you understand uh, the basics of uh, wealth creation, I think anyone can create wealth and should not have much anxiety about doing that. So with that, let's get started. So I think the first thing one needs to understand is real return. So that is your return after inflation. So if your real rate of return after inflation uh, is 10%, uh, then in today's money, your wealth in 50 years will grow 117 times. So if you start out with just 1 lakh of rupees, uh, you will end up with 1.17 crores of rupees in today's money, which is a lot of money and quite adequate for most people who can just start out with a lakh right now. So uh, this is important to understand. The other is that if you uh, had a real return of minus 1%, as quite a few people do, because they do not invest in equity, uh, they invest in or real estate or some other kind of uh, instrument like your own startup or maybe crypto or something which gives a significant real return or could give that, um, then you end up could end up with a minus 1% real return, which would destroy 40% of your wealth. So if you started out with 1 lakh, uh, you would get less left with uh, 40,000. Now, of course, one other thing that you have to understand that in terms of your real return is that you need to control your savings and spending. Because if you spend a lot and save very little, then the chances of your getting a real return will reduce. So if you have managed your savings and you are spending wisely, uh, enjoying life, but still maintaining a balance between spending and investing, then you can get wealthy slowly. Uh, for most average people, index investing is a very good idea. And the two extremes, one of being stuck in fixed deposits, and I almost call this a disorder because there are so many better alternatives to fixed deposits which exist, and I'll leave you to research those. Uh, but just know that today, if you're even putting one rupee in a fixed deposit, uh, you are probably suffering from a disorder. The other extreme is the get rich quick disorder. So if you um, take prudent risk in certain things like your own business, like investing in startups, or if you think you understand the next big thing, or uh, maybe making the right investment in crypto or something, or if you're really lucky, maybe you buy a lottery ticket and you win a big lottery. Uh, so these are the sort of get rich quick things. I call this a disorder because if you kind of keep focusing on getting rich quick, uh, then, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't, uh, maybe you take part of your wealth and try and get rich quick. Uh, nothing wrong with that. but. Uh, if you just focus on that and you forget about managing your you know, spending, your investments, um, and participating in index investing and getting wealthy slowly, uh, then uh, getting rich quick could be a disorder. Then the, another thing that you should uh, focus on is very good housekeeping. So you should be able to track your wealth and monitor it against, say, an index and see how you're doing. Because if you are really good at trading or um, you know some stock picking yourself and things like that, uh, then you should be doing significantly better than the index. But if you're not, 
uh, then this tracking will help you know that and you will avoid the pitfalls of uh, wealth destruction and create wealth optimally. If you happen to create a significant amount of wealth, then you should not forget to enjoy it because otherwise, what are you creating this wealth for? You entered the world with nothing and you will leave with nothing. So if you uh, do not enjoy your wealth uh, then and keep trying to create more and more wealth and create more stress, uh, then uh, you are probably doing something which is suboptimal. Uh, the other thing that you should do is that you should consider transferring your wealth wisely, whether it is to society or to your next generation. Uh, it needs to be done in a very thoughtful manner. The last thing that I'll end with is investing in yourself. So you can invest in your mind, and there are lots and lots of ways of doing that. And you can invest in your body. Um, that is your health. And again, there are lots of ways of doing it. But if you uh, focus on that, think about it uh, consciously, ask around and find what works for you, then wealth will be automatic. So thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you found something useful in it.